love it. You just can't. The only time he needs attention is when we're not paying attention to him. How does that work? Of course it works like that. It's a universal Okay, Child this um, is uh, an audition tape for a babysitter. <laughs> this is what you'll be dealing with, Mr. Wrestlebuns. Aww. Sir, okay, you better now. Please don't destroy our set. All right, could you get you some... Some okay. yummy snacks. One interesting thing, um, although we did make decisions together, is that the kids' yeah. natural inclination will be to separate because if mom is really strict, then this new guy, maybe he's going to be more lenient. So if we want to go get ice cream or I want to go see my boyfriend or I want to, uh, you know, whatever, go to Silver Dollar City today or I want to get this new dress, they're usually going to go, you know, who, who can I ask first? that's gonna, you know, say yes. So they go to the new guy, right? And I'm tender hearted, I'm just meeting, you know, these girls, maybe it's a year into our relationship and we're still getting to know each other. Naturally, I'm gonna give in, you know, I wanna get your ear pierced for the 14th time. Okay, bye baby, if that makes you happy. Right, so that's just kind of some, some child psychology. Don't ever let them do that. It's important that you guys make decisions together. So I would always say, you know, that sounds like a nice idea. I'm gonna run it by your mother. And then they're like, oh, because yeah, they know they already asked. And I said no. Yeah. So make decisions together. Don't let them separate you. Yeah. Okay, something to consider dating with a woman or a man that has kids. It ups the stakes. Gentlemen, ladies, if you're coming into a dating situation, your intentions need to be right. And, of course, there's a natural arc of time where you need to get to know each other. But to get a, a child's heart and emotions involved, it just ups the ante. Okay, so you really need to take a step back, you know, go to coffees, do lots of lunches, um, you know, go on hikes together, you know, try to get to know each other as much as you can on a friendship level before you start diving into any intimacy or spending, you know, weeks at a time at the house around the kids and playing with them. It just is another, you know, it's just another way that you can literally break the kid's heart again. You know, here's this new guy. Oh, mommy's happy about him. This is fun. He's bringing me things and now he's gone again. We don't want to confuse the children, okay? It's all about the kids at this point. You know, you're not single. You're not out there hitting the club and just meeting people. It ain't like that anymore. Right. So, so guys, gals, if you're going to date somebody that has kids, you've got to be ultra sure that your intentions are on point and this is something you could see go the distance. All right. And that's actually one of the first things that I told Dominic as we were starting our relationship, you know, every decision that I make affects five people's lives. And I can't, I, you know, he wasn't allowed to meet the kids initially because I can't afford to make a decision that's going to hurt the four little people I'm responsible for. Right. How long was it before I met the kids? Mm -hmm. And so it was a while before I even met the kids. Right. Yeah. And that gave us time to get to know each other before jumping into. Right. And prior to Dominic, no man outside of my family spent time with my children. Right. Um, I really respect that. I mean, someone as beautiful as you, it's hard to do. The fellows were just blowing up her door, her phone, just psh, trying to Skype her, Tinder her, whatever. I'm, I wasn't on Tinder. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't around back then. That was a relatively <laughs> new thing. But I, I was, I was very impressed by that. You know, that you had kept yourself isolated, literally from the dating scene and protection of your children. Um, I think for you that worked. For some people, they need that socializing aspect, and that's good, but just uh, proceed with caution and always think about your kids first. Okay, this is a big one. When you're talking about somebody's ex, okay, so I'm the new dad. This is the only position you should ever take, is one of neutrality and respect. You want to talk with your significant other in private and use some adjectives that are more colorful, that's your business. Okay, but around the kids, you cannot and I, I cannot stress this enough. You cannot speak ill of somebody that you were not around for, for whatever chapter is. It's not good for the kids. It's not good for your family. It's not good. For, you have to maintain neutrality. And I'm not saying we want to avoid the truth, but you have to approach it delicately. Again, that's an adult problem. It's a with, jealousy problem. Right. And you know, and well, I'm, I, I'm yeah, sorry. They're, they're children. They're innocent. We are adults. We made decisions that brought our family to this point in history. And, and I don't feel guilty about where I came from or where I am. It's not about guilt, 
But the, the point is the children are the innocents, you know? Right. So putting our jealousy or fear or insecurities. insecurities on the child is actually, it's abusive. Yeah. Something to realize with regards to that is the children see themselves as extensions of their parents. You have to realize as adults, until a child has a sense of self, they find their identity in their parents. So if you're speaking ill of their other parent, you're hurting their heart because they, when they're young, see themselves as an extension of their own parent. And if you want a relationship with them, you're just shooting yourself in the foot. Right, so you have to say things like, you know, baby, if they confide in you, I'm sorry that happened that way. Um, the good thing is that this is different. Your mother and I get along wonderfully. We really love and respect each other. And our goal is to create a beautiful life together. So you just kind of pivot towards the future. You just put that hope right back in their heart instead of dwelling on the past and going back and rehashing and he hurt, who hurt who and who cheated and blah, blah, blah. It's just, um, it's over, you know? Mm -hmm. So you just, the main thing we can do is reassure the children that those days are over and this is a good, loving foundation for your future. And now if you're on the flip side of that, if you are a parent who's divorced and your ex spouse has remarried, you can't bash the new person. You know, you're not living in that home. You don't know how that person <clears throat> is treating your ex spouse. You're not seeing it. And, and children, well, it doesn't matter how good the relationship is. I think their natural inclination in any situation is to be um, cautious and disgruntled when a new adult is coming into the family dynamic. And so we've already touched on that. But even if you're the one who's still single, you have to guard your words when it comes to the new family dynamic if that's where your child is living. And ultimately, if you're able to maintain a disposition of peace and neutrality and, and encouragement for the future, that's what they're gonna respect in the long run. Okay, here's another big one. Don't take anything personally. You have no idea why the kids are doing the things they do. There's a lot of hidden kind of patterns, emotional patterns that are going on because they're trying to deal with the trauma, the breakup, this new life they're in. You can never, ever, coming in as a new parent, take anything personally or you're not gonna see the truth behind why the kid is reacting the way they are. Okay, last thought. Last thought. Um, we do not use the word step in our family. I Terrible idea. think that it creates a level of separation between us and them. You know, if you're a woman, you've taken your husband's last name most of the time. And we use this bonus dad. Um, the kids call him Dommy. Um, Dom Daddy, Big D, Super D, Champ, <laughs> Fella, Step, Dad. It's terrible. Yeah. Like, why, why do you immediately want to put some kind of giant emotional chasm between you guys? Like, right. between you ones, use, use guys. Like, it's terrible. Right. So we don't allow people, if someone in front of our children says, oh, you're half brother, I immediately correct them. No. He's just their brother. Yeah. Adults label people and right. things like that. This isn't something that children naturally do. I grew up in a house where I had four half brothers and sisters, two brothers, two sisters, and I was the only one who had a different mother. And every time an adult used the word stepmom or half brother or half sister, I felt alone. And it's just not healthy and there's no reason for it. There's no purpose except that it puts division between you. I'm not half a dad, she's not half a mom, this isn't half of their brother, we're one family, I'm gonna be there 100% of the time, I'm gonna love them 100%. And that's how it is. It's all or nothing. Right. And that's what, the, that's what children need. They need a foundation of all. They right. need complete love, complete accept, acceptance, you know, and confidence that this is a good, you know, jumping off point for them for the rest of their life. Which actually makes me think of something else that we, we shared with the kids. You know, they naturally are going to feel protective of their mother or their biological father. You know, that, that's just the way children are. But we have always told the kids plainly, it's good that you love your dad. There's enough love for everybody. You know, right. we don't have a lack of love. We can always create more love. And um, right, the kids could end up with two moms and two dads at some point, like if right. they both remarry. So 
you know, what's, what's the problem? You have that many more, you know, financial supporters. If they want to go to college, you have that many more emotional support supporters. You have that much more family to love and enjoy. There is no um, limit to how much, you know, love you can bestow on a child. All right, guys, we hope you enjoyed. Um, subscribe. We got a lot more stuff coming up, a lot more good videos. Let us know what you love uh, about uh, our channel and about our family, and we will work to give you guys more content that you like. See you later. We need a babysitter. Should Maybe two. Do our catchphrase? Probably two babysitters. <laughs> what? What's our catchphrase? <laughs> well, you're on Tim Friday. Oh, have a fantastic Thursday. <laughs> What's that gonna? Fantastic. Have a fantastic Friday. This Thursday. <laughs> so you guys want to know what it's like real time? This is it. Look at the camera. This is what I do all day, every day. Yeah! Ooh. And this was just during our yeah. li little filming session. Which lasted about <clears throat> 10 minutes. What's that? Yeah? What's, What's that? that? Who did that? Who did that? Who did this, Mama? You gotta find him. Mama. Mama. <laughs> He's blaming the kitties. Oh, the, the kitties, kitties did, did it? it? Yeah. Mama.